Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship on this, the last Sunday of the church here, the Feast of Christ the King. I would commend to you the announcements found in your worship folder, and I do have a few announcements this morning. Uh, To the folks who are joining us by the stream, uh, the order of service uh, with uh, all of uh, the hymns and the readings, as well as the bulletin with all the announcements can be found on our church's webpage. If you go to the homepage, www.cheshirelutheran.org, and you scroll down there on the left-hand side of the homepage, there's a list of services. Today's service is at the top of the list. If you click on that, it'll take you to a page that has the bulletin and the service pages, as well as a link to the church's YouTube channel where you can find this video. All that information was also sent out via a mass email to the congregation. Uh, If you're not on that mass email list and you'd like to be, please reach out to the church office and give us your name and your email address, and we will add you to that list. A few things going on here at uh, Cheshire Lutheran this week. Uh, First off, today at at 9.15 this morning, we have Sunday School by Zoom. Uh, Parents uh, of Sunday School-age kids, uh, that link should have been sent out by uh, the teachers directly to you. Uh, And uh, if you're not getting that, please reach out to us at the church office and let us know. Uh, But Sunday School is today at 9.15 by Zoom. And there's an old Bible study at 9.15 this morning, both by Zoom for those who are not able to be here in person, and in person live in uh, the fellowship hall for those who are able to be with us. Uh, So that's 9.15 this morning. Uh, And uh, for those who are watching the video, maybe not on today, it's uh, November 22nd uh, of 2020. So uh, if you're not looking at the video on November 22nd of 2020, uh, those aren't going to be taking place today. Um, I was asked a question to clarify a a few things here uh, regarding the precautions we're taking here at Cheshire Lutheran uh, and and COVID-19. Everybody knows that we are keeping six feet apart and wearing masks. Those are because the governor has mandated those precautions for indoor, in-person gatherings. Uh, People are also aware, I've been announcing it the last few weeks, that we're leaving the doors ajar to let fresh air in, uh, even when it gets to be winter. That is not a governor's mandate because of COVID. Uh, That's because we want to sing in the services. Uh, Some of people, some some of the experts are saying you shouldn't be singing. Uh, If you're gathering for worship, uh, you're safer humming during the service. And most of the members responded, Pastor, we don't want to just hum, we want to sing. Uh, And so if you're going to sing in a gathering like this, they recommend taking steps to uh, mitigate the concerns, to to, to lessen the concerns and to make it less unsafe, we'll say. And some of those include changing the filtration, and we have a more efficient filters in our HVAC system to help with that. Uh, They also recommend fresh air. Uh, If you're going to be singing or um, engaging in activities that would increase exhalation. Uh, And so that's why we have the doors uh, ajar and and the windows open just a little bit uh, to bring in fresh air. That's not a governor's mandate because of COVID. That's something that we're doing because we want to sing during our services. Uh, And so we're we're not going to be flinging the doors all the way open and, and inviting the outdoors in, but there will be a circulation of fresh air. So six feet apart and the masks, that's a a, a government mandate related to COVID. Uh, The fresh air that we're bringing in and the changes to the HVAC system, that's what we're doing so that we can continue to sing in our services as opposed to just having to to sit here and and hum along, uh, which uh, most folks have said that they didn't want to do that. So that's uh, why we're doing the things that we are doing. Uh, Also here uh, at Cheshire Lutheran, uh, Wednesday is Thanksgiving Eve. We have our traditional Thanksgiving Eve service at 7.30. That service is both live in person and it will also be streamed out on YouTube uh, for folks to watch. If you want to attend the service in person on Thanksgiving Eve, uh, we do ask, we are going to be asking folks to please sign up, just like we do for Sunday mornings. Now, obviously, we're not doing sign up on Thursday this week because Thursday is Thanksgiving. So this week, uh, sign up is going to be on Tuesday morning. If you would like to sign up for the Thanksgiving Eve service or for next Sunday's service, that's Tuesday morning from 10 a.m. to noon. Uh, You can either call the church office, you can stop by, but that's both for Wednesday night's Thanksgiving service and also if you'd like to be here next Sunday at either the 8 or the 10.30 service. So again, Tuesday is the sign up for the Thanksgiving Eve service and for next Sunday's service. There will not be Wednesday Bible study this week uh, at Cheshire Lutheran. Wednesday Bible study is not meeting this week. 
Um, <clears throat> that's because I'm actually trying to take a few days not in the office. Uh, I will be here for the Thanksgiving Eve service uh, to lead service and to preach, but I'm not going to be in the office this week. So if you need to reach me directly, if it's an emergency, uh, please reach out to my cell phone, either uh, call that number or text that number, and that's how you're going to reach me, because I'm not going to be in the office during the week. I'm also not going to be leading next service next Sunday, uh, and uh, so now I feel bad for Carol, who's going to be fielding the phones. As soon as I tell you who's leading service next Sunday, uh, Pastor Nichterlein has graciously agreed to lead service for us next Sunday. Uh, so uh, we have a guest preacher who will be preaching and leading service. Uh, that's going to be Pastor Nichterlein. And I know he's not going to be standing here in the middle of the chancel like I do. He's going to be standing in the pulpit for the service. And so he'll be leading service from the pulpit. So uh, we have a guest preacher next Sunday. Uh, Pastor Nichterlein has graciously agreed, uh, volunteered, uh, said he wants to, to do this. So uh, we're thankful for him and his desire to be here and a part of this. A um, couple other reminders. Uh, we are approaching the end of the year, uh, so please remember to send in your uh, tithes, your offerings. Uh, we're reaching the point where uh, if you've got anything outstanding left on your pledge for the year, it is time to, to kind of figure out what you've got left and send it in. If you have questions uh, about uh, if there's any amount remaining on your pledge, please uh, reach out to the church office, and uh, we can look that up for you. Well, actually, Carol can look that up for you. Uh, and let you know where things stand. If you have any questions about that. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, the newsletter deadline is this week. Uh, are, are you actually saying the newsletter deadline is Black Friday? Okay, the, the newsletter deadline for articles for the December Heavenly Herald is Black Friday. Um, <clears throat> so I guess it's not entirely a, a week off because I have to write some newsletter pieces. Okay, um, but newsletter deadline is Friday of this week, uh, so if you have anything you want the congregation to see before the end of the calendar year, now is the time to get it in. Um, as always, thank you to everybody who uh, makes the, the live streaming possible, uh, the folks who, who work with the tech behind the scenes, Bill, Jules, Steve, Firo, uh, Carol, who just keeps everything running smoothly in the church office, and Martha, and all the musicians uh, for their uh, gracious ministry uh, and all the work that they do. Are there any other announcements this morning? May the Lord bless our worship.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, merciful Father, you have appointed your Son as judge of the living and the dead. Enable us to wait for the day of his return, with our eyes fixed on the kingdom prepared for your own from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading for the last Sunday of the church year is from Ezekiel chapter 34. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep. And I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. They shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of the sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself, will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with side and shoulder and thrust at the weak with your horns, till you have scattered them abroad. I will rescue my flock, they shall no longer be a prey, and I will judge between sheep and sheep, and I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord. I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm number 95, verses 1 through 7. We read the psalm responsibly by whole verse. I'll be reading the odd verses and the congregation, the even verses. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make the joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, 
the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, and that it is coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says, all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is accepted who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty? or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated for the hymn. Thank <laughs>
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. I don't know about you, but for many folks, it's hard to believe it's already the 22nd of November. Thanksgiving is Thursday. Friday is Black Friday, and Christmas is a little over a month away. Most people that, that I've spoken to just... It's hard to fathom this. It seems like March, when, when COVID changed everything, it was not eight months ago. And it's hard to fathom that it's the Sunday before Thanksgiving. I don't know if you're one of them. I am. I'm one of those folks. Uh, ran out and did a little bit of shopping with a list that, that looked really odd to me. And I called my wife and I said, why am I getting these things on the grocery list? And she said, Thanksgiving dinner. It doesn't seem like it's November. It doesn't seem like it's the last Sunday of the church year. And our readings for this morning didn't help either. If I really didn't know better, I would have thought it was the fourth Sunday of Easter. You all know why, right? The fourth Sunday of Easter every year is what Sunday? One or two people have whispered it. Good Shepherd Sunday. Fourth Sunday of Easter every year is Good Shepherd Sunday. And from our readings this morning, you would think it were Good Shepherd Sunday all over again. Our Old Testament reading from the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search out my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered. So I will seek out my sheep and I will rescue them from all the places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out of the peoples and I will feed them on the mountains. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. And I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost and I will bring back the strayed. And I will bind up the injured and I will strengthen the weak. But it's not just our first reading where we hear talk of a shepherd and sheep. Our psalm for this morning, Psalm 95, the first half of verse 7 that we read, For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Or our gospel reading for this morning. He will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Time and time again in our readings for this morning, we hear the image of the shepherd spoken. And really, I mean, it fits with the fact that I still think it's just a little after March. It might as well be Good Shepherd Sunday. But that image of the Good Shepherd is such a wonderful one, and it's one that we need now. I think, I don't know if I should say more than ever or more than we have in a long time, but we need it. We need the Lord today to be our Good Shepherd. I know it's Christ the King Sunday, and we look forward to his imminent return and his judgment, and that's wonderful. But that picture of the shepherd that comes through so clearly in Ezekiel and the Psalm and Matthew. That's what we need. We need it because so many people in our town, our state, our nation, our world, and maybe even you here in this room, or you watching this stream. People are feeling lost and hurt and, and even abandoned. Even abandoned. Normally around this time as we approach the holidays, people begin not just to think about the things that they're thankful for, but the realities of things and people that they've lost 
those who won't be sitting around the table, how life is different now than it was in years past. And it's magnified, amplified exponentially for people now. Life was resuming a routine that, okay, we're not going to call it normal, but a manageable routine. And then COVID infections in the state and around the nation begin to rise. And all of a sudden, the process of reopening is rolled back. And restrictions are clamped down. And, and now there are some folks who are saying, don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Can you imagine that? Don't celebrate Thanksgiving? The last eight months already seemed like they were lost for many people as the response is, where did it go? One word, COVID. And now the holidays look more and more like they're going to be impacted as well. People whose lives were assuming some sense of routine, at least, if not normalcy, now find more restrictions placed on themselves. And those connections that we were starting to make again with one another are being severed. And so people are starting to feel alone, even more so than they have over the last eight months. Because now it's darker earlier, it's colder. And all those connections to loved ones that we had longed to experience are in jeopardy. People are feeling lost because of the uncertainty, the confusion. Sickness that continues to plague us, whether it's COVID and all the problems that it brings, or just everyday life. And the trials and the tribulations and the illnesses that that brings. And we're hurting from all of the change that's happened. All the experiences lost, especially for our young people, milestones that the class of 2020 that had no prom, no graduation. And I know in the grand scheme of things, those of us who had our prom and our graduation can say, you know, it was one moment, but for them, it's a big deal. Are all of you who have lost loved ones who couldn't go to a funeral and are waiting for a memorial service at some point in the future, or you had one and you had to participate by Zoom. People are lost and hurting and alone right now. And the devil of the world and our sinful nature just magnifies that. The devil says, yeah, you're alone and you're hurting and nobody's coming for you. Our sinful nature causes us to doubt. And our world, as much as it claims to bring people together, separates people with much greater efficiency. Modern technology like cell phones, which is supposed to bring people together, has just driven a wedge between us and we no longer understand what social pleasantries are or how to be courteous and polite. And people are keyboard commandos and sit behind their devices and say the most hurtful, vicious things. And the news continues to fracture and splinter us. We're lost and we're hurting and we're alone. And if you're feeling that way in this room, if you're feeling that way as you watch this stream, for all the people who are feeling that way, the Lord speaks to you today. He's speaking directly to you. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for you, my sheep. I will seek you out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered. So I will seek out you, my sheep. And I will rescue you from all places where you have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring you out and I will feed you on the mountains. I, I myself will be your shepherd. 
and I will make you to lie down, declares the Lord. I will seek you out when you are lost. I will bring you back when you have strayed. I will bind you up when you are injured. I will strengthen you when you are weak. The Lord is your shepherd. And when you are feeling lost and hurting and alone, he's coming to find you. He's seeking you out. Every time the phone rings and it's me or a member of this congregation, the Lord is seeking you out. Every time you open your Bible, the Lord is seeking you out. Every time you come here to his table to receive his very body and blood into your hand, into your mouth, please note, you don't reach out and take. It's given to you. He comes and seeks you out. He's seeking you out in his word, in his sacrament, in his people. The Lord is coming for you. He will not let you be lost. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to find you. To live for you, to suffer for you, to die for you, to rise for you. He came from heaven for you. And when he comes back from heaven to reign and to rule over all things, when he separates the sheep from the goats, he's coming to find you. And all those things that are making you feel lost and hurt and alone, the sickness, the disease, the doubt, the fear, the anxiety, the problems in this life, well, he's got a plan for what to do with them. Did you notice it? In Corinthians? For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. You know what that means, right? You know that bug that goes skittering across the kitchen floor and your wife screams and you <laughs> stomp on the thing? Yeah? That's what God is going to do to sin and sickness and death. He's going to stomp it out. All the things that make you doubt and fear and worry, all the problems and the difficulties that plague you in this life, he will stamp them under his feet. Because that empty tomb means that he reigns over all. That empty grave means he is the Lord of everything. And he is your shepherd. If you are feeling hurt and lost and alone, the Lord is seeking you out. Coming to find you. To bring you strength and comfort and hope. To bring you healing and life and joy. He's coming for you. And he's bringing you the gift of everlasting life. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus, the shepherd of the sheep who is coming to look for you and who brings you life everlasting. Amen. Please rise. God made you His, claimed you by water and the Word in holy baptism. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our Christian faith in the words of the baptismal creed, the Apostles' Creed, found in our service pages for this morning. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. The congregation may kneel for the prayers as you are able. We thank you, O Lord Jesus, for bringing us to the end of another church year. While we long for your final advent, we rejoice that you lengthen these days that many would hear of your saving work and believe. Send your Holy Spirit on your church that we may use this precious gift of time by faithfully confessing you the Savior of all. Lord, in your, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Christ, ruler over all things, look with mercy on this land, our government, and all the nations of the world. Preserve us from war, bloodshed, and rebellion. Protect all pregnant mothers and their unborn children. According to your will, grant us good weather. And protect those caught in storms and cold. Bless and uphold the work of Joe Nowak, Julian Mueller, William Lamb, Andy Bryant, Ben D. LaBelle, Michael Collins, and all who serve in our nation's military and as first responders. Protect them by your mighty arm as they serve to keep us safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great physician of body and soul, pour out the peace you won on those who have troubled hearts, those who are sick or injured in body or mind, and all those in need, including Luke Slauson, 
Carlene Myers, Judy and Pat DiDemizio, Wendy Emmerich, Bill Demers, Antonia Gradoya, Carol Plantier, The Pond Family, Melissa Mikalski, Will Doucette, Donna Quast, Dick Hagstrom, Arlene Walden, Mary Lou Aston, Norman Benedict, Fred Nuffer, John McBain, Eric Falk, Mary Munter, Ellie Kenny, June Schaefer, Melba Lassie, Ali Flugrath, Leonard Drust, Rita and Joe Stark, Laura and Michael Webster, April Matson, Patricia and Lee Olson, Dorothy Rappel, Beth Moeller, Georgiana and Ralph Shoup, Gail Smuda, Carrie Norton King, Al Mayer, Mary Alice Duchenne, James Noob, Diddy Izard, all those who mourn, including the family and friends of Harriet Turkelson, those whose cry comes to you in any need, and all those whom we name silently now in our hearts. Visit and relieve them all according to your mercy, wisdom, and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, in your goodness, you have blessed Bruce Emmerich, Brad Schick, John Kasberg, and Demi Sherman to see another year of life. And John Priscilla Mulvaney, Paul and Christine Smith, Tim and Cindy Baker, Edward and Nancy Schweitzer, John and Joanne Kasberg, and Blair and Kristen Donewald to share another year in the bonds of holy matrimony. In the midst of our world that has so much difficulty, we give you thanks for these joys. And we ask you to be gracious to your children now and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And to your hands, O Lord, we commend all those for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. I know there's something that's not in our bulletin. Uh, we do have someone who's going to come up and address the congregation very, very briefly uh, this morning. Uh, and in case you can't tell from his mask, it is our stewardship deacon, Mr. Rob DeLavelle. Good morning. Um, my name is Rob DeLavelle, and I am the stewardship deacon. And I have the privilege of speaking to you this morning to uh, kick off our 2021 uh, stewardship program, today being Pledge Sunday. And... Uh, I'd like to just tell you briefly about what's available to you in your pledge packets um, and how we are asking you to participate in this year's campaign. The first of three things you'll find in your pledge packet um, is our mission plan, AKA work plan. Um, it's a budget, but we don't call it that because it's how we um, you know, use our financials to support our ministry here at Cheshire Lutheran Church. As you're aware, the plan supports both our home ministry, including Little Cherubs Christian Preschool, as well as worldwide, so that's how we support the community around us. The plan was thoughtfully developed by the Finance Committee and approved by both voters and the Council. And if you have any questions about it, please don't hesitate to either ask myself or any member of the Council. We are richly blessed. Uh, in that our 2021 work plan, um, we've done very, very well due to the generous contributions of all of our CLC members. The second of three things you'll find in your pledge packet is a time and talent card. We're asking you to give thoughtful consideration to how you um, can get involved in different parts of our congregation in areas where you might aspire to, to participate. Again, we are richly blessed. There are so many people that give so much of their time and talent to make this place run around us, and for that we're very grateful. But that said, we're always looking for new blood. 
As the expression goes, many hands make for light work. The time and talent card is your opportunity to indicate your area of interest where you may choose to get involved. This year, we refreshed that card in a couple different ways. We uh, better aligned the opportunities to get involved with, to meet our needs. And we also made it easier to discern between areas where you're currently involved and areas where you may have an interest in getting involved. That will allow us to determine net new interest. The third and final of the three parts of your pledge packet you'll see is the pledge card itself. This is where you can have the opportunity to make a financial pledge to support the work plan that we talked about earlier. Now the thought occurs to me, I've been using the word opportunity. In fact, perhaps I should say the word responsibility, given the fact that everything that we have is given to us from God and is entrusted to our care. A note to givers who in the past have not made a pledge. Please consider making your contribution via a pledge. It um, demonstrates your support to our mission plan and best helps us to manage our financials. Next steps and my ask for you. Please pick up your pledge packets before you leave today or somehow call the church office and make an arrangement to, to get it. <coughs> Give thoughtful consideration to your time and talent card and your pledge card and return it to the church office, US mail it to our post uh, PO box or drop it in the offering plate. If you have any questions, please reach out to me and let me know. Thank you very much. For those who are here in church this morning, uh, <clears throat> pledge packets and all that information can be found on the tables in uh, the hallway, headed out uh, towards the parking lot. Uh, for anybody who is watching the service by the stream on Tuesday morning, when we have the open office hours uh, to sign up for services Wednesday and Sunday from 10 to noon, those materials will be on the table in the narthex. You can come and pick those up. Uh, they'll also be here, uh, I believe, on Thanksgiving Eve if you're here for the Thanksgiving Eve service. Uh, at some point, we will turn around and mail those out. Uh, but if you are able to pick them up, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, as the parable of the talents last Sunday highlighted for us, uh, we've all been received. We, we've all received gifts from the Lord. He has given to you and to me his gifts to work with. And your gifts are not mine and mine are not yours, but everyone has been given something by the Lord. And we have an opportunity to put it to work. The mission in this congregation isn't just here in this town. It extends beyond the work of the church and even beyond the work of Little Cherubs, but to the national and international missions that this congregation supports. Uh, and I thank you for all that you have done this year, even in the spite of, of COVID, uh, to uh, give thanks to the Lord and put his gifts to work. Uh, and uh, I encourage you to continue uh, to bless as he has blessed you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. We rise to sing our closing hymn.
one final announcement. Uh, please, if you're planning to join us for services, make sure we know in the office, because if you show up without having told us, uh, it causes issues for seating for the people who have let us know. So please, make sure to let us know, whether it's Thanksgiving Eve or just a regular Sunday. We need to know you're coming so we can be sure to have a seat for you. Thank you. Thank you.